Good eye. Good eye. Aussie buns are blokey. Hey, Gowan. Today, I'm going to be working on this um, olive forest. <coughs> <coughs> Gonna be working on this olive forest that I got here and um, doing a bit of a trim on it. If you remember back to the original video on this one when I put it all together, it was amazing that they all fit. I had a lot of olives in a lot of pots. I'll try and put a link to it, but anyway, it's on one of my old videos, Olive Forest or something like that. I put it together last year and I've just let it grow. And on a whole, it's been pretty healthy. I haven't lost many, if any, branching. The main tree is a little bit yellow, but it is starting to get some colour back. I think it's just shedding some old leaves and sorting itself out, but it is getting healthier again. Um, I just hope it goes a bit darker again because it sort of doesn't really match the rest of the trees, which are nice and dark, really dark. So I'll be trimming this today. I won't be doing any wiring because it's pretty well filled in all around the place anyway. Um, a couple of these olives have really beautiful fine leaves. This one's got a little bit bigger leaves, so it's not ideal, but we just have to live with it. Whereas some of these others have got tiny, tiny little leaves on. It's amazing how small they are. Um, anyway, first point of call before we get into that. Good old beer. Just get the old beer going. Any beer company up there wants to sponsor me, send me their beer, I'll happily drink it. Uh, all sorts of beer. Right, now we've got an unboxing from Stephen McKay with the um, Dragonflywire.com, that's his website, I think on Facebook, maybe even on Facebook actually. Dragonflywire.com, Dragonflywire.com, sorry. <laughs> Stephen McKay, he sent me a little gift here, so we're going to open that one now. i just got to go and get a knife because I'm not organised, but that's alright. I'll go and get a knife, have another sip of me beer. And then we'll get onto the tree after we open up this. Anyway, if you just want to send me something, I'll be happy to open it on camera too. Um, don't have to if you don't want to. I'll put a PO box in the description in case someone does want me to do an endorsement for them, but don't have to, no obligation. It's just a bit of fun, that's all. No worries. I'll go and get the I'll go get the knife. Okay, so I've got a razor blade here. I'll just cut this. And then I might actually call over Leo because a few people missed Leo in the last video. They want to see him. Want to see how the young bloke's going. So we'll call him over. I just don't want to do it quite yet because I don't want, to, don't want him jumping up and cutting with a blade. Right, that's done. Leo, come. Come. So here's Leo, my little boy, still going right. I'll just lift him up. He's over there eating brown trees, aren't you, boy? Hey, Leo, is that, is that camera? You're on camera. You're on camera, bud. You're famous. Hey, good boy. Okay, go play. Go play. Good boy, go play. Okay, so let's open up this gift. So there's me old mate, Leo. Or young mate. Okay, looks like it's all packed pretty well. So he makes stuff out of wire, I'm pretty sure.
Okay, so here it says, I got tired of watching you hack away with your bonsai with a bent old punch, which is what I used to tear the roots off with when I was repotting. So I made these. Hope you enjoy and get plenty of use out of them. So that's pretty cool. Now uh, it also says, uh, give me old old nine year old boy Link a shout out. How you going, Link? How you doing, mate? He loves my intro, so please don't change it. No worries, mate. Good day. Aussie funds are plug gear. How you going, Link? There you go. So we've done that. Bonsai is also a hobby of his, so that's pretty cool. He's got azaleas, chefleras, cheflera. Anyway, check out his website, dragonfly.com, and let's have a look what he's made. All right, drum roll, drum roll, please. Otherwise, we'll settle for a beer. Bloody beautiful. So he sent me a couple of cards here. Well, actually, I'll, I'll try to set up a bit of a link. Oh, it is actually .com, so it's actually a website on the net. But it's probably on Facebook too. Anyway, I'll try and set a link up, but I'm not very skilled at doing that. But in case that doesn't work, here's a card of his. I'll hold it up there for a while so you can see. Handcrafted sculptures. Stephen at dragonflywire.com So cheers mate. Now let's see what you made us. Pretty exciting. Actually got them a couple of days ago but I went away for the weekend windsurfing again so I didn't want to open them off camera and I didn't have time to make a video. So I've been pretty excited for a few days to open it up and see what's in here. Make sure everything's cut here. Well, it'd help if you had the blade the right way around, you bloody idiot. Almost cut myself, had the blade the wrong way around. I was pushing on the sharp side. I don't know, Sam, sometimes you worry me, mate. Okay. Here we go, ready? Oh, wow, that looks sick. Yeah, some handcrafted wood root hooks. Man, they're sweet. They're really sweet. I'll be sure to use them, mate. Cheers for that. That's absolutely awesome. And here's a straight one. Another root hook, handcrafted wood. The copper, copper around the top. Man, they're really sweet. Thanks, thanks heaps for that. They're sweet as. I think that's all that's in there, which is plenty. I know, I'm just making sure that nothing was left behind. I'd hate to do the unveiling and have something left behind. I'll just try and show you these. These are absolutely beautiful. Handcrafted, just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Wow, that is some slick, slick, sweet work there, mate. Thanks for that, Stephen. That is bloody impressive, mate. Wish I had half your skills. Really cool. The other one, really cool. So cool. See if I can get the light shining off it better. There we go. Handcrafted out of nice bit of wood, beautiful looking wood. Copper on the top. Absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Stare at it for hours. It's got a nice handle, nice grip on it too. It's even ergonomic. He must have really put some time in choosing the perfect bit of wood for that. Beauty. Cheers, mate. Bloody beauty.
Yeah, thanks so much for that. That's awesome. All right, cool. So let's put them aside for now. And I'll make sure that I use them in the next repot video I do. Bloody awesome. So once again, in case you didn't see... Stephen McKay, obviously very talented. Dragonflywire.com. So I'm not 100% sure how much stuff he makes, but it looks like he's fairly diverse, so really cool. Handcrafted tools. Just so beautiful. Stare at it for bloody hours. Beauty. All right, we better move on. I've been dribbling a bit here, but that worth dribbling over. Tell you what. Okay, let's get all that to the side. And now I have to find me bloody snips. Sorry guys, I'm gonna have to leave you for a second again. I've got to go find my snips, you believe it or not. Didn't grab me bloody snips. Hello. What you eating here, boy? Dog's eating a dog's eating a stick. <laughs> He's a good boy. You're a good boy, Leo. Okay, I'm going to get the snips if I can find them, and I'll see you back here in a minute. Uh, come on, Sammy, where'd you leave them? I really got to clean this shit up. I'm starting to lose where everything's at. Come on, Sammy. Not seeing them. I used them. I know I used them for something. What did I use them for? What did I do with them, Leo? Hey, what do I do with my sticks? Phantom. That's what I did with them. Ah, oh, if you guys are still listening, I'm actually gonna. Take you outside as well during this video. I'll take you outside and show you what I've been doing outside. Anyway, so this is what I was using them for. I was cutting all the bungs off because I bought a heap of bungs or goof plugs for my drip line, and I'll show you what I was what I've been doing with them in a minute. No worries. Cheers. Let's get to the tree. Got me snips. Sorry about all that mucking around. I really got to clean my place up and sort my crap out here. She's getting a bit out of control. So anyway, this main tree here in the middle is not going to need much trimming. This top bit here, I actually want to grow into another crown up the top. So it creates a little bit more interest and a few more height layers to the whole thing. So you can probably agree with one up the top there, or I might even bend it over this way. Should look pretty sweet, anyway. So I'll bring it in a bit closer while we work on this tree, because you don't need to see my ugly mug. Ah, oh, jeez. It's all happening here today. Nothing's going quite to plan, but that's how I roll. Okay, now once I get out of the light, you'll hopefully see a bit better. Okay, so I've got it on Adrian Eagleton's turntable here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to trim this top bit first, because I want that to start branching out more. So there's already branched out in a few spots, so I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to get some branching off of that. I'm going to cut this one. Here we've got three, we've got the top one coming up. A front one coming out the front and then a side one out here now I'll probably keep this side one out here because out the front there's already a little bit out the front here 
and you've got three from one spot and also this side branch is already starting to divide it's got three or four little branches on it so I'll cut that one back shorter and completely get rid of this front one so that we don't have three from any one location you only want two if you have three you end up with a fat knuckle and three branches coming out so you only want two Top one's only got two, now that's only got two. Two here, so we're all sweet. Okay, so I'm gonna let them all grow out. I'll shorten the top up, let it start dividing. Okay, so it's divided into two. Here, I wanna shorten this one, but we've also got some divisions already, you might be able to see. One here, one here, one here, one there. And what I wanna do is try and keep most of those, but here we've got three from one location again. You got one coming off this side, one coming off that side, and then the one in the middle. Now, we've already got one down here, which is gonna come off that side. So I'm actually gonna chop this slightly bigger one off and keep this side, because this one goes in a different direction which will help fill it in faster then I'm just going to cut it back and then this here will shoot out faster so that's it looks pretty ugly for now but once it all starts to fill in and grow out it's going to look pretty good there's also a lower one here that's growing out so I'll probably shorten it back to where it starts to divide there another one here that's growing out so only two from each location as far as the branching on this what's going on leo you got your head between my legs hey? what's going on what's going on hey this is for leo this is for leo mm -hmm. yes good boy hey if you've been having haven't been snipping your bum hey that wouldn't be too good would it bit unhygienic Go. So we're gonna cut these a little bit shorter. The longer ones will go a little bit shorter on this main tree, but not too much because it did stress out and go a bit yellow, and we don't want to stress it too much more. Having said that though, it sort of dropped a lot of the yellow leaves and is now greening up more. So I think it was just having a natural leaf selection and a bit of a replacement of the old leaves and opting itself to grow some new ones rather than stick with all the old ones. And you've got to remember too, when it got shoved into this pot, it's gone from a fair bit of soil to having to learn how to share its space with all these other trees. Well, these other trees have not even blinked. They're actually looking really, really healthy. Growing really, really well. So I'm not even going to look at the outside silhouette of this tree. I'm just going to cut everything back shorter on all the trees to a couple of nodes or short, just a short bit, about that long, whether it's two or three nodes. And what that will do, because... Well, to try and explain it, if I was to go like this and just cut them all the same length all the way out, you would end up with a just a dome canopy on the whole forest. The whole forest would turn into a big dome canopy. And although it sort of looks pleasing in a way, I want there to be different heights and levels. And it's already got different heights and levels all over it, so... The best way to keep that now is just to cut everything back to two shoots everywhere. Don't worry about an outside silhouette. Just cut everything back to two shoots everywhere. Uh, sorry, two shoots. Two nodes and two shoots. So if there's three coming up at one spot, cut it back to two. And don't worry really where it is on the outside silhouette of it. Unless you've really got a branch that's stuck right in the middle out of the light and it's shot out a strong a strong branch I don't know what's going on I can't talk today but anyway unless you got one right in the middle that's shot out a strong branch trying to get to the light then you might want to leave that one a bit longer because you cut it back way inside the tree it may not have the energy to shoot right out again like it 
like it did. So I'm just cutting them all back to two, back to two, two nodes, two nodes, two nodes. So short, quite short, so that we get a lot of branch division as this thing ages. You know, you might only get half an inch to an inch of growth on your tree per year. And probably on this one, that's probably more like only half an inch or just over a centimetre in the metric scale. And that's fine, you know, it creates a lot of ramification and you think 10 years, that's, you know, 10, 20 centimetres of growth through the whole tree, which is a good deal of growth, you know. So I'm not sure there's a branch that's come up here on its own above the height of the rest of it all. Okay, it comes off of a section down lower, but it's sort of like the apex of a... What we could do with that one, because it's actually got... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> because it's actually got a lot of division, what we could do is actually keep this one, create another canopy up here, which creates even more interest and more you know, different heights in the canopies and pads and all that stuff. And create another one out here like we're going to create up here. We can create another one here. And that'll be lower than the height of uh, this tall one. But still somewhere up here. And create a lot of interest. So that'll be pretty cool. So I'm going to leave that one. Just chop it back on the divisions. A little bit shorter so that it branches out better. But yeah, really, really, especially in the short time that I put it all together. If you didn't watch my previous video, you can still go back and watch it. Um, I don't know, something about an olive forest or something. But if you're not going to watch it, I will tell you that all these trees were my crappy little olive trees that I've been... I've already been training each individual tree for up to five... One of them probably nearly up to 10 years, all the individual trees. And what I've decided to do was, because none of them were really, you know, standing out on their own as a great tree. So what I decided I would do is actually put them all together into this forest. And hopefully you can turn all your ordinary mediocre trees into something that's actually quite special. So that was the idea of this whole composition. And I think I've achieved that. It's starting to look pretty good. And I'm pretty happy with it. So Yeah, so here I'm still cutting back to two nodes everywhere. If there's three in one location, I'm cutting it back to two. And to know what to cut back to two, generally... To know which ones to cut off, if you've got three... The one you cut off is generally if there's one that's growing in a completely wrong direction, you'll cut that off. But if they're all growing in a pretty good direction, to choose, I normally cut the strongest one off at the top. If there's three from one location, I'll chop off the strongest one. If it's at the bottom, I'll chop off, say you had those two, those three, I'll chop off the weaker one, say my little finger. Top of the tree, I'd chop off my thumb because that's the fatter one. If they're all in pretty good locations spread out. But if one of them's in a completely ridiculous location, like it's crossing over or growing back into the canopy, that would be the one you would chop out. But if all three are going pretty spread out in a nice fan shape, at the top, cut the thumb off or the big one. At the bottom of the tree, keep the big ones, cut the little one off. And that's, that's as simple as, as it is, you know, you just go around chopping back, chopping back. And these trees, I'm not joking, like I might make it sound maybe too simple, but it's not, not very hard at all. You just go back to exactly that. Two at, two at one location, keep chopping them back. And before too long, especially if you chop them back, 
unevenly as far as like a pad here and a pad in here and then another pad out there and it's all uneven it's going to create interest and a nice tree even if you don't think about the design too much obviously if there's a big blank area that you would like to get some growth into you can wire out one of these branches you know and bring it across to wherever you like and yeah just fill in a gap but apart from that once you've got a bit of a structure set and you have you're getting happy with it just trim it like this two in each location and back on the second node don't even worry about the silhouette of it okay so here's a classic example of one there's three here the one that comes out the front one that comes out sort of like the side or the top and then the bottom one now here i would actually like i'd actually like if there was a pad down here so i'm going to choose this one because i like the direction better and the front one and as it happens i'm actually cutting the weak one off and there's actually a fourth one growing straight in so i'll cut that off too okay there's actually a fifth one growing straight in cut that off and then I'll shorten this one out here. I'll leave it a little bit longer, like that'll be four nodes. And then it can divide out there, and then that'll create a lower pad out here. So as you can see, I wanted something out there, something's growing out there, so I keep that a bit longer, and I choose that one to keep. And it's as simple as that, you know, you just go, well, where do I want a branch? And if you want a branch there, you let it grow out there. It's actually not not that complicated at all I know it does sound it and this tree pretty much has been developed for a lot longer than you would think as far as like it's only been six months as a composition in here but it's actually some of these trees have been developed like I said nearly 10 years some of them which is why a lot of these already have branching and a lot of ramification. But I didn't do anything special with them. I did the same thing. Even when they're on their own, I did the same thing. Then after I put them together, I'm doing the same thing again. Okay, so we're getting down to the pointy end now and then we're done. Okay, here it's a bit weak. If I was to cut it back, those branches could die, so I'm going to let them grow out a bit. It won't hurt if they do. Pull some weeds out the bottom. Okay, here we got one growing straight down. That's already right at the bottom. And we've got this nice one at the bottom here. So there's no point in keeping that one, so I'm going to get rid of that one completely. Pull some more weeds out. Plenty of weeds. Chop a weed off in here. I can't quite get to it properly weed and this front one down here well it doesn't really need it does it because it's already got a lot of branching and stuff there so I'm happy to chop that one off completely I might even get the different snips for that proper branch cutter chop it off or concave cutter whatever you want to call it Now we've got some Irish musk growing on here and I will be getting rid of that in winter and putting some nice moss back on but at the moment I don't really have a lot of good moss lying around so there might be some I'll see how I go if I can find some if I can't I'll re-moss it later but if I can I might pull this bad section off here and put some moss on today we'll see how we go okay Keep chopping. Yeah, you know, just chop it back to two, chop it back to two. You can see where I'm chopping, chopping back to two. This one here is growing straight in where I don't really need it, but I'll cut it back to two and see if it develops into a bit of a low pad there in time. Back to two, back to two. See, and then that creates that little pad here and then you go up to this top pad. As you can see, it's all pretty simple. This one coming straight down here. 
Do I need it? Not really. I don't think I will. I'll take it off. It's literally as easy as it is. There's another one here that's growing that way. I probably wouldn't mind if a little tiny pad come here. No bad. Probably wouldn't mind if a little tiny pad came. So we'll see how we go there. Um, another one here right in the middle. Hard to get to. Growing straight out the middle of the trunk. Chop that one off. So that one's gone. Another one that's shooting across from who knows where. That one can go. A few on the inside here that need to go. Don't really want new fresh shoots on the inside. The inside needs to be almost void of leaves eventually, just so that it gives it that old look with, you know, so you can see the canopy from the inside, the whole outside of the canopy and all the old branching and stuff. So you don't really want too many leaves. On the young ones like these, I'll still leave it until it grows out and naturally it will drop its leaves anyway and look old in time anyway. So you don't have to go in there and remove all the old leaves if you don't want to. You can just let it do it itself. You can put in as much effort as you want or as little as you want with bonsai. It's up to you. The more effort you do put in, the quicker you can develop a tree. How are we going here? Pretty good. I reckon we're looking pretty good. So I've been rambling on here for a while, but to the right. That's the thing, if I keep you live through the whole thing, I run out of stuff to talk about, so I just ramble on. When I do the hyperlapse, I, um, yeah, you can't hear what I'm saying, and I don't say anything. <laughs> just state the obvious. So, that's pretty much it. I'm pretty happy with that. There's another branch at the back here, which is crossing over. Get rid of that one. Shorten that one, shorten that one. It's an ugly down one here, I'll just cut a bit of that off. Shorten it a bit. There's three here, you can see three. I'm actually wondering why I'm keeping that at the moment. Don't think I want it like that. I want to keep it a bit shorter there, I think. So I'll just cut it. I am keeping some of this foliage actually because it's only a tiny little tree with not a lot of growth on it so it needs some growth there to keep it alive and I think that's why I left that on there but I've decided to cut that off now anyway. Okay, so there's the canopy. Another canopy over here which grows from down here. You know, being an evergreen you don't have to have it structurally perfect because it's never going to lose all its leaves unless you've done something seriously wrong. Just pull some more weeds out. Okay, so that's pretty much the forest done. Let's have another sip of the old Byron Bay beer. Not a bad drop. Just wish one of these bloody beer companies would sponsor me. The amount of beer I go through. Right, so that's about it. I will... I think I will try and find some moss for you and put a bit of moss on. Let's do that. Um, I could even use one of those new root hooks just to pull the old moss off. Although I don't really want to dirty it, because they are pretty cool. Just to show you again. Absolute work of art, that thing. But I can actually use that to pull. I'll do it. I'll just... I've got to use it one time, don't I? 
just too good to use. So I'm just going to pull this moss off the top. The Irish moss and the liverwort. This is liverwort as well. It's not great for the tree because it does sort of it does sort of make the water when you water it run off more instead of getting in there. Your normal moss is fine, that lets water get in there. But this liverwort sort of stops it a bit. Also got a bit of creeping oxalis in there. Another thing I'll show you too is the reason I like to put moss on, especially when you've got them jammed up, I'll just bring it in close. So especially when you've got uh, your trees jammed up or limited room, the moss actually creates a really nice growing environment for the roots just under the moss. So these are the roots from all the trees literally just under the moss a bit of new hair coming, no that could be creeping oxalis actually maybe not, maybe it was a new root hair but you can see underneath here, I'll pull this out as well not so many under there, but there's some and it actually cre creates a nice here we go, under here You can see some nice roots in there. Creates a nice growing medium for the roots. Really good conditions. So I'm only I don't know, I've got a limited limited amount of moss available, so I'm not gonna rip too much off, but I'm just gonna get rid of the worst of it. And then we'll put some moss on, make it look a bit nicer. Trying to weed this with one hand while holding the camera in my hand. Not the easiest thing to do, but we'll manage. So we'll pull this Irish moss out. I want to use that root hook, but I don't want to put these dirty hands on that nice handle. Bugger. It's almost too good to use. Okay, let's pull these weeds out. Not too bad, not too bad of weeds really. They like a little fine sort of grassy weed. It's actually, when they're young, actually add to the aesthetics, I reckon. Make it look nicer. So at the back here, you can see all this liverwort here. So let's rip that off. Especially considering we've got this little weak tree here with a little bit of foliage on top. It's got this really cool dead bit, a bit of a live vein up the side. So a really cool little tree that we chucked in there. Let's pull a bit more off. Alright, so I'm pretty happy with that. The rest of the moss is pretty good. That's nice moss. It'll green up when it gets a bit of sunlight and, and it cools down a bit. At the moment it's probably been a little bit hot for it, although we have had a pretty good month, not too much hot weather. So we're in autumn now, starting to cool down, although having said that, I think we've got a 38 degrees Celsius this week. Still not bad though, that's a lot better than our 48 that we had in summer. Okay, so I'm going to put some moss on there, some around the front here, and in the meantime, let's go and I'll show you collect getting the moss, where I'm going to get the moss from. Okay, so I'll show you that, and I'll also show you what I've been doing outside, what I've been up to. No worries, cheers. I'll catch you outside. 
Okay, so we're in the bonsai area, as you can see now. The avocado tree and the ones that I'm deciding to keep uh, growing. Dog sniffing around here at his own poo, I reckon. Unless it's some other animal that's been around here. Anyway, hope it doesn't lick me after sniffing that. So you can see them growing. A lot of the stuff's growing. Oh, someone wanted an update on this box thorn. Box thorn's got a lot of thorns on. It's growing. All the trunks are surviving so far. Hard to see from here, but they are. Um, anyway, the moss. Let's get to the moss. Stop getting bloody sidetracked, mate. Right, here we are. Where are the weeds died under here? It's kept it sort of shaded during the worst of the hot weather, so there's some moss. So what I'll do is I'll just get my scraper under here. Basically just lift it off. Nice big sheet. Get some more. What do you reckon of that one, Leo? Good? Bloody beauty, mate. Hey. Good boy. So it's probably nearly enough moss there, just that. There is actually another small patch here. We'll get a little bit more. Might need a little bit more. Okay, that's surely got to be enough. All right, I'll take that in the shed. I'll just show you what else I've been doing as well. And, um... Yeah, to show you what else I've been up to, helping out the environment. Okay, so you guys have seen these trees here I've planted. Showed you these a few times. Oh, Leo's taking a poo there. You're on camera, bud. Oh, no. Trees here. All the way around here, there's a thousand of them. All the way down that way. All the way down to that very far corner way down there. Lots of trees. Look at that shiny coat. Beautiful dog. Anyway, I'll show you what I've been doing as well. Okay, dog can't get through here but that's alright, I'll only be here for a minute. So we've got the house there, the big trees around there, and up the top of the hill there, you can see some of them poking up. So they're growing. But anyway, what I've decided to do, that's a sheep trough. What I've decided to do is I'm putting in another 200 odd, maybe 300 trees, and I've ran all this new drip line around here. And it goes all the way along. And I'm gonna put trees through this whole area and it goes up up there across to that big tree there back down to the fence and this whole area is going to be trees as well so that's going to be pretty cool so next to the house can look like a forest so this will be all tall trees tall trees out the back and up the top so the whole house is going to be surrounded by big trees just going to have this little strip in the middle here a little bit more bare and then sort of leave that hilltop as is, just natural, at least for now. So, but anyway, this area here that's all bare, it's going to have trees, that's pretty cool, and trees around the house. So yeah, anyway, that's what I was going to show you. Let's go moss the tree, guys, and then that'll be it for the video. So let's go do it. Cheers. Okay, guys, got me pile of moss here. I'm just going to 
chuck it on any old how. Not, not going to be winning any shows anytime yet, so won't be worried about how it looks too badly. I'm just going to chuck it on here. Yeah, that poor old dog doing his private business and his dad decided to video him. But then again, he was the one that did it in the camera to start with, wasn't he? Poor boy. All right, so here we go. Put the moss on. Pretty much just chuck it on any old how. It'll grow in there how it wants to. And as long as you weed it, which is something I'm a bit slack with because I hate weeding. The moss will cover in. And the tree is going to love it because it's going to be able to grow roots underneath as it already has, as I showed you. And I believe moss is a, an essential part of the bonsai all year round. It is, a good, it is good advice to keep it off the trunk, so I've been a bit slack. There's some on the trunk here. But... Anyway, we could try and pull some off, but for now, I'll just leave it. You can pull it off or get vinegar. It sort of makes it look cool and old, so I'll leave it for now, but I am going to do something about it later. But yeah, a bit of vinegar. Looks like I pulled up way too much moss. Not going to be needing it all, but that's okay. I'll put some back in the same spot, and it'll knit back to the ground, and I'll have it there for next time. And even that spot will grow more moss anyway because the moss just seems to grow flat out in that spot. Don't know why. Guess it's nice and moist with a little bit of sunlight for it. Needs some sun for moss. You find if you have a completely shaded pot, you actually get almost no moss or it'll die. So that does need some sunlight, but it also needs to stay wet pretty often or it goes dormant. Doesn't really die, it just goes dormant. Right, so pretty happy with that. It's moss all around the place now. Nice new moss instead of weeds. This here is moss, it'll green up. There's actually a little bit of wibber, liver wart there. Don't know what's wrong with me today, I can't speak anyway. That's it. Another dob there. As you can see, I've got plenty left over, so I'm going to have to put that back out where I got it from. And that'll be pretty much it for the video. So I'm going to put that to the side, clean the table off a bit, and I'll put that moss back where it was after. Clean the table off a bit so it looks sort of semi-respectable, even though I am a bit of a messy, messy bonsai bloke. I call myself messy bonsai bloke. Right, that's pretty much it. That's pretty good. All mossed up. Got this nice tool as you've seen. Beautiful. And the other one. Bloody beautiful. Right. True artist. True artist. Right. Let's get back here. Drop the height down a bit. I know I shouldn't keep you guys live for me adjusting the tripod, but it's kind of amusing for me to adjust it while you guys are shaking your head. With everything blurry and moving around on you. Bit of a morbid, morbid bit of fun that I have over it. Right. So that's it. So I'll give you a spin of the tree on the way out. Bit of a close up in the forest. And thanks very much, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks, Stephen McKay, for these awesome, beautiful toys work of art these tools absolute work of art they've come in really handy i'm just so worried about using them that's all i don't want to dirty them on you really cool got a real problem with my light 
on my lights. Sizzling and cracking and carrying on. It's about to blow, I think. Keep an eye on it. Might get it on camera. Come on, open blow. Oh, it's getting brighter again. No, it's come back on. But there's, I think the glass is about to blow out in one spot. It's not happy. Something's not happy in there. Anyway, get back to it. Didn't get it on camera. I'll give you a spin on the way out. So anyway, let's do the old outro. No worries. Cheers for watching. Was it Bonsai Bloke? Please like, share, subscribe. Tell your mates about the channel. Maybe try and get hold of a beer company to sponsor me. And that's about it. No worries. Cheers. Thanks for watching. <coughs> Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you next time. Spin on the way out. Cheers.